Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 18th of November. Centre announces slew of measures to curb rising coronavirus cases in Indian capital. US formally announces plans to cut troop levels in Afghanistan. And Sri Lankan lawmaker eats raw fish to promote sales hit by coronavirus. And now for all the details. Amid the rise in COVID-19 cases in India, particularly in capital New Delhi, the central government on Wednesday announced a set of measures including conducting a house-to-house -house survey and deploying mobile testing vans to help curb the virus spread. New Delhi is currently contributing the highest number of cases to India's COVID-19 tally, which has reached over 8.9 million. As India continues to record large number of COVID-19 cases from across the country, mainly from capital New Delhi, Interior Ministry has announced measures to help and control the situation. The ministry will be providing aid to conduct a house-to-house -house survey, deploying mobile testing vans, flying in more doctors and paramedics, increasing ICU beds, ventilators and other machines, and placing more equipment in private sector labs. This came on the same day as the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi approved a proposal from Delhi government to reduce number of guests at wedding functions from 200 to 50. The proposal was sent on Tuesday, citing the wedding season amid the COVID-19 pandemic. So, Everest, the past two months, there are about 60,000 tests or more than that tests daily. In the whole country, you can see per million tests. 3,000 tests per million. No country is not able to do it. We are doing it. And we will increase it. We are not saying that we will stop. We will increase it. Meanwhile, authorities in Delhi's neighbouring Noida city started random testing for the virus at the key Delhi-Noida borders on Wednesday. As per the plan, traffic between Delhi and Noida would continue to be normal and only a few randomly selected commuters shall be tested. The move would help in issuing advisories to the employers and organisations where a large number of people work. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has spoken to U.S. President-elect Joe Biden by telephone to congratulate him on his election victory, which he said showed the strength of U.S. democracy and it vowed to deepen strategic ties. India's ambassador to the U.S. Taranjit Singh Sandhu said the leaders had a very warm conversation and they exchanged views on the Indo-Pacific region, the role of healthcare and particularly vaccines amid coronavirus pandemic. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and U.S. President-elect Joseph Biden had a very warm conversation during which they exchanged views on the Indo-Pacific region and the role of healthcare, pharmaceuticals and particularly vaccines, said India's ambassador to the U.S. Taranjit Singh Sandhu on Wednesday. In the telephonic conversation, the leaders agreed to further advance the India-U.S. Comprehensive Global Strategic Partnership and discuss their priorities. Modi also extended his best wishes to Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, the daughter of an Indian immigrant whose election to the second highest public office in the United States has been cheered in India. He had earlier congratulated Biden on his election, describing it as a testament to the strength and resilience of democratic traditions in the U.S. Prime Minister Modi and uh, President-elect Biden had a very warm conversation uh, Prime Minister congratulated uh, President-elect and President-elect extended warm Diwali greetings to Prime Minister and the people of India. Then in the conversation today, they discussed about uh, the global strategic partnership which United States and India shares 
and they also exchanged views on uh, the Indo-Pacific area. Uh, then they also discussed about the current uh, problem which both United States, India and the world over is facing vis-a-vis -vis the COVID. Meanwhile, Biden-Harris presidential transition team said that Joe Biden looks forward to working closely with Indian Prime Minister on shared global challenges. India and the U.S. drew closer during President Donald Trump's presidency as both countries aim to counter China's expanding military and economic influence. The Pentagon has formally announced that U.S. President Donald Trump will sharply reduce the number of U.S. forces in Afghanistan from 4,500 to 2,500 before he leaves office in January. This comes despite U.S. and Afghan officials warning of troubling levels of violence by the Taliban insurgents and persistent Taliban links to Al-Qaeda. U.S. President Donald Trump will sharply reduce the number of U.S. forces in Afghanistan from 4,500 to 2,500 before he leaves office. The Pentagon announced on Tuesday, stopping short of the complete withdrawal Trump threatened to carry out by Christmas. Acting Defense Secretary Christopher Miller, who Trump installed last week after firing Mark Esper, confirmed the drawdown despite U.S. and Afghan officials' warning of troubling levels of violence by Taliban insurgents in Afghanistan and persistent Taliban links to Al-Qaeda. By January 15, 2021, our forces, their size in Afghanistan will be 2,500 troops. Our force size in Iraq will also be 2,500 by that same date. This is consistent with our established plans and strategic objectives, supported by the American people, and does not equate to a change in U.S. policy or objectives. Moments later, the top Republican in the Senate, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, warned against any major changes in U.S. defense or foreign policy in the next couple of months, including major troop drawdowns in Afghanistan and Iraq. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg also warned on Tuesday of a high price if Western allies pull troops out of Afghanistan too quickly, saying it could allow Islamic State militants to regroup. Moving on, university students in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit-Baltistan staged a protest recently, expressing anger over discontinuation of the Prime Minister's fee reimbursement scheme. The scheme was introduced in 2011 for the students to give them free education but discontinued two years ago without any prior information. Students of Karakoram University recently held a protest in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit-Baltistan against the discontinuation of the Prime Minister's fee reimbursement scheme. The scheme was introduced in 2011 for the students from least developed areas in order to provide them free education but was discontinued two years ago without any prior information. Pakistan occupied Gilgit Baltistan has only few universities like Karakoram, thus, literacy rate of the region is very low. Locals allege it is a deliberate effort by Islamabad to keep the youth of the region uneducated, as their education will be a threat for its oppressive rule. Pakistan's Maritime and Anti-Narcotics Authority seized 1,372 kilograms of hashish valued at approximately 3.5 million US dollars at open sea in the country's territorial waters. The Pakistan Maritime Security Agency's Commander Usman Amjad on Tuesday informed authorities have arrested four men alleged to be smugglers along with the seized drugs. 
Amjad said the suspects are Pakistani nationals and believe they were planning to deliver the drugs to other smugglers at sea, possibly headed for South Africa. This comes as earlier this month, Pakistani customs authorities seized 36.2 kilograms of heroin worth approximately 2.3 million US dollars stored inside small packages hidden inside containers of footballs allegedly designed for Montreal, Canada. Five men were then arrested. During operation, approximately 1,372 cages hashish and four smugglers were apprehended from a stateless boat. The value of narcotics in international market is estimated around Rs. 549 million. The seized narcotics is being handed over to anti-narcotics force for further legal proceedings. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. A former fisheries minister of Sri Lanka bit into a raw fish at a news conference in Colombo on Tuesday to boost under-pressure fishing industry amid the pandemic. Fish sales have been badly hit after a major coronavirus cluster emerged in the central fish market near Colombo last month. Sri Lanka's former fisheries minister Dilip Vedarachi bit into a raw fish at a news conference in capital Colombo on Tuesday to encourage sales following a slump during the coronavirus pandemic. Fish sales in the country have cratered after a major coronavirus cluster emerged in the central fish market in the outskirts of Colombo in October, causing serious financial hardship to many in the fishing industry. <laughs> Tens of thousands of tons of fish have been left unsold and prices have plunged as people have stopped buying and eating fish, a mainstay of the Sri Lankan diet. The Sri Lankan government on Tuesday announced a sharp increase in import duty on various kinds of fishes in its 2021 budget in a bid to boost the domestic consumption. The process of land preparation and designing is in full swing for the upcoming season in Asia's largest tulip garden in India's Jammu and Kashmir. This year, authorities have started the preparations early in order to prepone the tourist season in Kashmir Valley. Land preparations and designing of Asia's largest tulip garden for the upcoming season have begun at the foothills of Zawarwan Hills in Srinagar city of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory. This year, the authorities of the Floriculture Department have decided to deploy huge manpower along with good machinery to make the process faster. Tourists in large numbers flock Srinagar every year to see the beauty of tulips. The garden is spread over an area of about 30 hectares with an overview of iconic Dal Lake. इसकी वजह से हमारा जो एक प्लान था कि हमारा टूर सीजन प्रिपोन हो जाए कुछ महीने से तो हम उसमें सक्सेसफुल रहे हैं काफी ज्यादा क्योंकि ये अब आपको भी पता है कि ये वर्ल्ड रिनाउंड ट्यूलिप गार्डन बन गया है आपको पता होना चाहिए कि ये जो ट्यूलिप है इट्स अ बल्बस क्रॉप बल्बस क्रॉप होने की वजह से बल्ब के लिए जितनी फ्राइबल सोइल अच्छी रहेगी जितनी वो well uh, decomposed FIM usme hoga jitna wo uh, mitti usme friable hogi utna ye bulb utna flower acha hoga next season ke liye the department of floriculture engages local people during the land preparation or designing process ahead of annual opening of the garden not only inviting tourists to the territory but also providing locals with an employment opportunity every year the flowers bloom for about 15 to 30 days between end of March and early April in the Tulip Garden, established in 2007. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन